Your Steve Jones Show podcast will start shortly. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Brewers Outlet, your beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Yeah, big money quarterbacks, when they get the big contract, they still continue to be productive and do well. But there's so many parts that go into winning a Super Bowl, and you need to be able to spread the resources to do it. Not the easiest thing to do. And you notice when it comes to the Patrick Mahomes contract, let's go back to our interview with Brett Veach, the general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, when we had him on the show Super Bowl week. The first topic was about Mahomes' contract and how it was structured to keep the door open for them to keep the core group of players together at least through 2024 it's like a four year window for them based on how that contract is structured All right, let's get to our play by play call of the day Dwight Howard the easy way has a list Mr. Last five threes here up and jacks it in. Look at Howard at 35. Play like he's 25. <sighs> Last time I heard that was we were playing croquet. <laughs> <laughs> and even Kevin and Harlan the, made that sound uh, fantastic. And even the suit. Right, the suit came on. <laughs> Look at the suit. <laughs> playing croquet like he's 25. <laughs> The power to get it through the wickets. <laughs> what a! Not only that, a wicked slam from a wicked smack guy. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Harlan calling the suit doing croquet. <laughs> I have to say, though, I had my doubts about Dwight Howard signing with the Sixers, but oh, he's I been thought, very, thought, very thought, good for them. I thought you had doubts about the croquet part. Well, that too, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, you know what? And when you listen to Doc Rivers, he will tell you that Dwight Howard has not only been a big plus on the floor, but he's been a big plus off the floor because Absolutely. he's been mentoring – Joel Embiid mentoring Ben Simmons. You know, Ben Simmons is interesting because uh, this is just a side note, and then we'll get back to other stuff in a moment. But Ben Simmons, you know, what, is, what has he made? Two three point shots this year? Yes. Okay. Ben Simmons is criticized all the time and overanalyzed about the three point shooting. But I've said this always. And I think it's important. Now, how much he works on on the off season, obviously, Matt, I have no clue, no idea. So let's just say he does. All right. You know what I have, I really like about him is he understands what he can, what he can do, and he also understands what he's not great at. And it doesn't matter if he's getting criticized left and right for it. He's not going to hurt the team by doing something that he's not great at. He's not a great three-point shooter, so he's not going to take a lot of three-point shots. He's not going to sit there and go, hey, look, I made a couple. I went two for 20. Huh? He actually does what he does well. Excellent passer, great facilitator, sees the ball, sees the floor well. When he takes a shot, it's a, it's a 15-foot shot because guess what? That's his shot. If he even takes a shot, period. That's really the issue here is just taking shots at all, let alone the three-point shot. But he's really good at what he does, and he knows what he's really good at. 
And he's also really smart about not doing what he thinks he's not very good at instead of forcing it. Cares if you're getting criticized for not taking three-point shots. I'm not good at it. The key is to know what you do well, try to work on what you don't do well, and if you can't really improve that much, it and it just, you know, sometimes that happens. You work and work and work, and you're still just not great at it. Well, guess what? Don't put it in your repertoire. And I talk often about what I tell my students. So here's a simple one for you. If there is a word that may be a standard word for some people, but for whatever reason you struggle at, you struggle at enunciating it, you struggle in the usage of it, you slur it when it comes out of your mouth because for whatever reason, I said, don't use the word. I said, use the thesaurus. Come up with a different word that fits you. Let me give you one piece of football slang. He made a shoestring tackle. All right? Well, when you're going quickly on a play-by-play, sometimes shoestring becomes slurred. So what's a different way of saying it? And I, this is the example I use with my students all the time. I said, shoestring, where are the strings? This isn't a hard question, Matt. <laughs> oh, on, on the on the cleat, sorry. The shoe, right. the cleat. But, but on what part of the cleat? The bottom or? Oh, the top of the cleat. Right. So he makes a shoe top tackle. Ah, okay. Because it's a hard T, it comes out easier and you avoid the slur of shoe string if you're somebody that when it's coupled together it slurs i said so you come up with a different way they're both exactly the same just one is because of the hard t enunciates better shoe top tackle that's simple well now that goes back to ben simmons well guess what it's not really in his wheelhouse, the three-point shot. And he's smart enough to know it. So he goes with what he is good at. So just like an announcer will use a word or an expression that is easy for them to say, enunciate, and has the same meaning, instead of using something maybe everybody else does and slurring it, the same thing. See, now you're going to steal that, aren't you? I'm going to keep it in mind, at least. I have a game tonight, so maybe I'll keep that in mind. Not football, of course. No, it's not a football game tonight. Yeah. right. Keep the idea in mind. Suit Light throws it off the noggin, or you can say throws it off somebody's head. I mean, it's it's up to you. (laughs) He's Rudy. (laughs) Oh, goodness gracious. That's our guy. All right. But back to the money part now, after we slid over on Ben Simmons for a moment, because we were talking about the Sixers because of the Dwight Howard slam and the maturity. Look, Dwight Howard's won his championship now. It's amazing that amazing once you win your championship, like a lot of pressure in life is off the board. You're not out there trying to do a crazy contract negotiation or anything like that. You're just trying to get yourself into another winning situation and do the best you can with it. That's what Dwight Howard's doing. He won his title. He was part of the Lakers last year. The heck? It's terrific. But back to the Super Bowl part and getting there. You need a quarterback. All right? Everybody knows that. That's that's not difficult. Quarterbacks make more money than anybody. But it's amazing that since people got the huge quarterback deals where they're taking up 12% or more of the cap, Teams that those teams have not won. Have they been competitive? Sure. I mean, there's the uh, Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship game. Didn't win, but they're in the NFC Championship game. 
you see uh, other quarterbacks. You know, Russell Wilson's had great runs. Haven't been able to get over the top. Now Deshaun Watson has a big deal. We'll see what that means. Lamar Jackson, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, since he's had his big deals, the Steelers have won three playoff games in ten years. Let alone even think about getting to a Super Bowl. They've won three playoff games total. And it's the ability to spread the cash around, spread the wealth. And it's not easy to do because that is the position you need and the position demands cash. The Ravens are going to be in an interesting spot here in a couple of years. What do you do with Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson is still on his rookie contract. Baker Mayfield is still on his rookie contract. They've been able to build around Baker Mayfield. Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry. I, you're able to throw some money in the direction of, of, of Garrett. Yeah, he's still got Denzel Ward in his rookie contract. Really? Lamar Jackson, they've been able to put people around him. He's on his rookie contract right now. What happens when he gets to the second contract where the road to riches, which is great for the player, and by the way, keeps the team highly competitive. But I mean, look at some of the teams that have been successful. Goff was still on his rookie contract when the Rams got to the Super Bowl. Ryan Tannehill was on a reworked contract when he got Tennessee to the AFC Championship game. What's going to happen with Dallas once Dak Prescott's paid big money? Because Dallas has been existing on Dak Prescott's fourth-round draft contract. I mean, think about these things. Now, you've got Jalen Hurts. Okay? Jalen Hurts is on a second-round rookie contract. If you if, if Jalen Hurts is the guy you want to go with, take advantage of the second-round rookie contract he is on for the next two years and throw some money and build around that. That's if you think he's the he's the guy you have moving forward. Hopefully the Eagles front office can get their act together and do so. If well, I'm that's just, the case. Uh, but I'm just pointing that out. Yeah. That where where is he right now? The Giants can do something right now because they're still on Daniel Jones's rookie contract. And I don't really know where Washington is right now. I mean, they just uh, I don't know what they want to do with Alex Smith, for example. But even so. He's not going to command a big deal, I would think, at this point of his career. Lucky to still be playing. No. Right. No, I understand that. Or if they go with Taylor Heineke, then you got another low contract. He's a, that's a two-year contract. He just signed it. Okay. Yeah. You got a two-year deal. I want to say a two-year deal was worth, I think, a total of 7 or $8 million, something like that. Total for two years. But that's what's so interesting. You, it, it, It's such an interesting dynamic where it's the most important position. You need somebody that's really terrific at that position, which means you then have to pay for that position. But sometimes in paying for that position, you lose your flexibility to pay for the other positions on the field. All right, we'll come back with more in a moment. Great to have you with us today. The King in the final half hour will go through picks. Last week was not a Sterling Catrillo or King Week. As we continue, brought to you by Brewers Outlet here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Oh, every time you play this, I get the shakes. Suddenly, out of nowhere, they started playing this at the holiday party two years ago, and guess who jumped up on a table with a white jacket on and started spinning it over his head? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Twelve minutes later, the party was over. <laughs> then it got crazy when it was fist pumping. 
I wasn't there for that part. At that point, Mike, I was already on Route 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's he doing now? Remember that part where we were talking about Ben Simmons? Yes. Where man must know his limitations? There's a perfect example. <laughs> Everybody has their capabilities in the in a box, and if you ever stray outside the, the the lines of the box, it's uncomfortable. That was one of those moments where it was really uncomfortable for everybody in the room. Like, what what are you doing? Like, yeah, you know, and poor Roger, he's got all the sponsors in there. They're all flowing out like we got to get out of here. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, that's. Yeah. But as the suit said later, quote, I was feeling it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, suddenly I felt I was feeling it too. I felt the need to leave. But <laughs> I said, let's go. I got to go. All right. Uh, great to have you with us on the show today. They got a game tonight, right? Shikalemi's got a game tonight? Uh, they do, but it will, we are not airing it tonight. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and then Bucknell's got two this weekend. They got American, right? Yep, both the men. Uh, well, yep, the men do. The women are fortunately are still paused because they have another COVID case in Tier One. So, uh, fingers crossed that they're ready to go for the postseason because they are still the number one seed. Everybody is in in the Patriot League after the league waived the uh, twelve game rule. Well, and the women's team is a really well coached team. Yes, and of course, you know I'm a big fan of Kelly. So. Uh, who's an important part of that coaching staff. All right. Uh, but uh, uh, I hope everybody uh, appreciated what we were talking about with the quarterback thing because uh, the Eagles are in an interesting spot right now. You have a quarterback that might be, we'll see how they want to play this out, but might be your starting quarterback the next couple of years. That quarterback is on a second-round rookie deal. That gives you the financial ability to spread the wealth around because you're not now you got a cap hit from Wentz, obviously, you know, even with the trade. But you now have the financial ability to spread some wealth around to maybe rebuild the team faster because you've got a quarterback on a second round rookie deal. And that is going to be important moving forward. It's when you have to pay out the big money. And then look at the Steelers. Steelers are in an interesting spot with Roethlisberger. His cap hit is gigantic. And you notice the Steelers already have one restructured deal. Did you see who it was? It was Cam Hayward. It wasn't the quarterback. It was Cam Hayward. And I'm not surprised. Hayward's a guy that you know, he he really believes in in the Steelers. He believes in the organization, the whole deal. And he probably thought, "Hey, look, I'm a veteran. I made some cash." Um, he wants to win. He thinks getting his contract restructured gives him a better chance of winning. I got it. That's. I mean, I think that's that's important. I mean, I. I also think everybody should have the ability to quote get theirs. I, mean, I got that. I mean, believe me, I'm all for anybody making money. Yeah. The only example of that we saw in this stretch here that we've been talking about was when the Panthers were in Super Bowl 50 against Denver. Cam had just signed his big five-year extension, which was worth, I think, 118 million, something like that. Compared, not to compare to what the quarterback but, contracts are but, now. But he had just signed it. Right. So the ability to build the Panthers was still there there because he was still on his other deal when they were building the team. He didn't get that contract till the preseason or that offseason. Well, at that point, you've already built the club. You've already built it. Notice what happened after when... After he signed that deal, it was actually the subsequent years where that contract then became... Not a burden, but you know, reduce the flexibility. How about that? And you can say the same with Pat Mahomes this year. Except Mahomes' contract is structured in such a way 
that they can keep their core group of guys. The, the big money for Mahomes really kicks in starting after 24. Like 25, it's, it re- like goes to a new level. See, that's uh, the way is. That's why I asked Brett about the structure of the contract. Okay, it's one thing to look at the numbers and go, "Oh, it's a half billion dollars." It's how it is put together. All right, and they put together the Mahomes contract, which gives them flexibility, where they've got Travis Kelsey, they've got Chris Jones, Tyreek Hill. Those guys are already locked in. Now, how do you put guys around them? Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket, imports, domestics, microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere wine coolers water soft drinks snacks they roast the peanuts fresh and out every day six great flavors of slushies and the pickle bar led by the barrels and the dills indeed second to none all at our good friends at brewers outlet reagan street in sunbury the beverage supermarket and we're in the sunbury motors studio sunbury motors fourth street in sunbury Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, and online at sunburymotors.com. Great to have you with us. Matt, you're the Yankee fan. Introduce our next guest. Well, with the Yankees starting with their first game this weekend and looking to improve on his record in college troops picks, as is myself, the King. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> you know, we were Doing sitting right. around today talking, and, you know, Mr. Potato Head came up. Oh, I'm Jesus. sure you guys heard about Mr. Potato Head. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, Which, by the we're, way, we're we talking. never had when we were kids. We never had that one. I did. Yeah, we didn't, and that's what we started talking about. I mean, we could have, but it's just Mr. Right. Potato Head we just never got into. But we started, remember what we used to play in the basement, Steve, with the baseball cards and the Lincoln sure. Logs? Sure, sure, the way we set up our own walls and things like that. Yeah. We invented our own <laughs> baseball game. We had leagues. It was unbelievable, and it was so much fun. We, you, we would... If you go to the house now, you can still see it drawn on the on the cement. Well, not with all their crap everywhere, but the I'm people sure, renting yeah. it are slobs. But yeah. you um, you can see the chalk on the far side and on the wall because sometimes we'd use the cement wall. But Matt, we yeah. would draw a baseball field out of chalk on the on the floor. It was big. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you would pick your team with baseball cards. So you'd have a pitcher, catcher, shortstop, outfield, and all that. And then we would take the Lincoln log and, like a seesaw, that would be the bat. And then you would fling the – I think we used a ruler. Well, As, no, actually we used – what we used was uh, in the Lincoln log set, we yeah. used one, one of the walls, you know, that you'd build a wall with, and we'd use that as – Right, the, it's a lever and fulcrum. Yeah. And one of the small corner logs was the ball. And what right. we did was, is that the the roof was, were green slats. Well, the green <laughs> slat is what we put the Lincoln log on, and then boom, you hit it, and it goes. And if it hit the if it hit the ceiling, it was an out. If it hit the wall, and what happened was because my dad had a sheet metal fabrication shop. All the steel would come in and would be separated by cardboard. I mean, big pieces of cardboard because these were big sheets of steel. So what we oh, did we was we the took green monster. We uh, yeah, yeah, we we That's built sweet. walls. We built walls out of the cardboard. Yep. So and we put our monster in right field to be different. And then we had a scoreboard in left field. Right, it was made out. That was made out of wood. And if you hit the wall, it was a double. If you hit the wood, 
it was a triple. If you hit it over, it was a home run. And if you hit it in the field of play, we had a measuring stick <laughs> as to where it landed as to how close it was <laughs> to the card. That's, that's what we did. Card and that would be an out. That, <laughs> that would be an out. That's pretty good. I like that oh, a lot. It was, we had leagues. The whole neighborhood played. It was yeah, great. We made up played. our own games, man. It was fun. Every day yeah, we header. made up. We made up our own stuff all the time. We didn't, you know, it wasn't. We weren't. Uh, we weren't tied into Hasbro. No, no, that's crazy. You know, and it's an issue here in Connecticut right now. And the Biden administration approved it. The reigning sprint oh. track sprint track right. champion in Connecticut is actually right. a guy. But the female mm. track champion is actually a male. And it stood up. And he, yeah. she, whatever, is the track champion in Connecticut. I thought but you were going to say that. a guy running against women. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say that the Biden administration said we couldn't use the Lincoln logs anymore. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. We're being yeah. sued by Hasbro. So, yeah, we kind of marketed how... that game. That thing was great. So oh, we, we had a good time. So many games. We had so many. And, and then we'd have leagues with the uh, hockey. Yeah, Remember the we hockey did that with set? hockey, too. The hockey oh, set, man. we had leagues. I went out. I actually, I actually used my money. Right, so, you know, so I was working for my dad. I was cleaning bathrooms and things like that. And I I'm saved up some money. Cleaning bathrooms, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, the original two teams they put in the set was they wanted to put one East and one West. So it was the Detroit Red Wings and the L.A. Kings. Well, I went out and I bought the other uh, ten teams. Right. Well, actually, I, I ended up getting duplicates of the Kings and the Wings. So I have six teams. So I, we had all 12 teams, and so each one of us took a team. Yeah. And I understand, Matt, working for our dad, we worked for our dad since we were six years old. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so we had money when we were like seven. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's five bucks I mean, for every Saturday. Uh, I mean, now, the Biden cow, administration may be. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. Yes. Uh, yes. The old days. So the he Biden didn't administration say to us all day. It just we right. had one of those step shears. It, yes. It, 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 he would hold the steel from behind the shear, and yeah. me and Steve, we were little, so, yeah. so it took two of us to stand on the on the Thing shear, and, and we he'd go down, and we'd stand on the shear, and then he go shear, and we jump and shear right. the part off. Oh. You know what we dreaded? Like Four thousand of them. <laughs> yeah. You know what we dreaded was what he said. Now this is ten gauge steel. Ten gauge steel oh, yeah. is thicker. <laughs> okay, but when he said when he told us it was eighteen gauge, we're like okay. The two of us are like okay because we got to know what was what. Most of it was sixteen, <laughs> but every once in a while he got we have ten, and the two of us are like oh we're gonna be we're gonna be exhausted by the end of this. Uh, I mean I thought you were gonna say the Biden administration was gonna crack down on, on our Lincoln Law game and on child labor laws. All right, back with more in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Here on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Brewers Outlet. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is, because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection. Imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping, and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, Sunbury, wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage. Do you know where they got the uh, nickname for Babbel.com? Oh, no. <laughs> Chick let me broadcast. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was too easy. Uh, I know. It was a layup. All right. So, you know, I was talking with Kevin and I were talking about 18 gauge steel, which is relatively thin, to 10 gauge steel, which is relatively thick. That reminds me of the old joke about Ben Hur. Ben Hur, of course, at one point in the movie, is a slave who's rowing underneath, okay, in the boat. And the old joke was I've got good news and bad news. 
They said, well, what's the good news? Well, the good news is we're going to give you an extra ration of water and food. What's the bad news? The king wants to go water skiing this afternoon. (laughs) 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 All right. That's the difference between 18-gauge steel and 10-gauge. There you go. All right. Well, King, you and I got got? some work to do because you put up a goose egg last week, first of all. Yeah. And I went (laughs) two and five, and Steve went four and three. Not a great week for all of us last week. Well, at least I got none. Yeah, there you go. You you miss football, don't you? All right. So Steve is now in the lead at nine and four. I'm at six and six and seven, and King is four and nine. Right here we go again. Yes, here we go. We'll the start view from the bottom. That's right. So I'll have you go first, King, from the bottom up. Big Twelve, number fourteen, Texas against number eighteen, Texas Tech. All these games are tomorrow. Texas. I got the Longhorns as well. Texas Tech starting to lose it for me a little bit, Steve. Texas got in a fight on the floor last week with Andrew Jones, who's yes, obviously a great comeback story. That's kind of bothersome. I'll go with 18th ranked Texas Tech at home. Oh. <laughs> I think they'll be over it by then, but yeah, it's a little concerning. It played a factor in the loss to West Virginia last week. All right, next one Big Ten down. Number three, Michigan at IU. Steve. I uh, haven't liked Indiana all season long. Uh, Michigan is just a, I think, has a chance to be a special team. I think Michigan will win the game. I think they'll win it by double digits. Yeah, I like Michigan outright. King? Well, I could be an idiot and take Indiana after listening to the experts. So, Michigan. All right. <laughs> Michigan's really good, Kev. I think they've got three NBA players well, on that team. They're number three in the country. So. Yeah, but what I think they've got Indiana, three? man? They what's happened to them Kevin like Indiana is to Big Ten basketball what Michigan is to Big Ten football a big name that right now is a big name that's good but not great right and they've been like that and that and it's been that way for both programs for the last 15 years Michigan study in basketball well, Juwan's done a good job with them. And they've got, I think, between Dickinson, Isaiah Livers, and Franz Wagner, they've got three NBA players on that team. Wow. And the right transfers. They had, they brought in two transfers, and they're the right guys. The point guard, Mike Smith, from Columbia, is a grad transfer. And, Sh- and uh, Shondi Brown from Wake Forest, who's come off the bench and been really good for them. All right, staying in the Big Ten. This one was a toss-up for me. Number five, Illinois, without Ayatasumu. At number twenty-three, Wisconsin. Steve, Ayu, Ayu is it's iffy. I don't. I, he's got a broken nose. I, if I'm Illinois, I hold him out, and I still think they're better. There's something not quite right with Wisconsin right now. I, I'm not. It, it's it's hard to put your finger on it because they're all veterans, but there's something, they're out of sync. I'm going to go with Illinois. King. Um, actually, Illinois is one of the teams I've seen a couple times this year. Without him, I don't think they're the same team. They would have lost in Nebraska without him. Yeah, he's the best closer. He's the best closer in the game. Yeah, he's real good. The last four minutes, He's the guy you want with the ball. And by the way, he drives right. Note to Nebraska. (laughs) Send your own with the Badgers then, King? (laughs) Your own with the Badgers then? I got Wisconsin. All right. I'm going to stick with Illinois after tossing and turning on this. I... (sighs) I guess I'm, I believe a little bit more in Illinois, Illinois' depth right now without Desuma, whether he plays or not, or if he's limited. So I'm going well, st- to stick with Illinois. I picked Illinois. Yeah. Uh, I think he's the best closer in the game. I think overall they're playing better basketball right now, too, other than the Nebraska game. They're real well, good. Well, they, they won the Nebraska game. They didn't lose, right. so. 
Next one in the SEC. Number six, Alabama trying to right the ship against Mississippi State on the road. King. Alabama. Steve. Yeah, I like Alabama. Mississippi State's okay. It's just, I, you know, you could see last because obviously I've seen Alabama in person each of the last two years. That's a lot of the same guys. Uh, I think they're a good team, especially offensively. I'm sticking with Bama as well. Now we go to what could be the game of the weekend. Still undefeated. Number two, Baylor. At number 17, Kansas, who's playing a little bit better right now. But this will be the big litmus test for him, as I mentioned in the open. King. Um, I've never had faith in Baylor. I'm going to try. I, I know I'm losing, but I'm going to. Uh, Kansas knows how to win. A good coach, Kansas. Steve. Here's my concern about Baylor. With everything that's happened with COVID, they've been in and out, in and out. Like, paused. And remember, when you're paused, you're not practicing. I mean, do, I mean, when you're paused, you're doing nothing. Uh, I'll take Kansas uh, just on a lark only because I've been playing more lately. I'm sticking with Baylor. Because, yes, I, I'm starting to like Kansas. I think I need to see a little bit more from them this weekend. We'll learn about Kansas right. this weekend. There's, as I mentioned in the Open... The last four wins they've had were not against great teams. Against Kansas right. State and right. against a terrible Iowa State team. And they put up a good fight against uh, Texas last week yeah. before, they, before yeah. they lost in overtime. So I'm sticking with Baylor mainly because I'm yeah. just not a 100% oh. believer in Kansas yet. Baylor's a final four team. I think I've team. learned not, being, not knowing a whole lot about it uh, just because it's not on around here much is if you're ranked, you're good. And there's not a huge difference between yeah. number 20 and number one. You know? right. They're all good I, teams. I, I mean, Baylor's a Final Four team. My problem is the in and out nature of how the last month has been for them. Right. I mean, that, that's my only. If, if Baylor had just been playing, 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 there'd be no doubt I picked Baylor. But because of the pause, and the pause means you don't practice. I you know. We'll see. All right, another one and that could be the, the game snow, of the weekend. Too. I mean, that yeah, that's yeah, the snow. They've, got, they've, had, they've had everything. Now, another possible game of the weekend candidate back in the Big Ten, number nine, Iowa, at number four, Ohio State. Steve, uh, I'm going to go with Ohio State. Now, let me. Uh, obviously, I just saw Iowa last weekend. You know what, Luca Garza looks tired to me. I mean, I, this guy gives everything he has, and he has done that for four years. But this is the first time I've looked at him and thought like he hit a wall. You know, I mean, I know they beat Penn State by six, and I know what he scored in the game. But I'll be honest with you, he looked tired. And then they played the next game against Michigan and scored 57 points, and he looked exhausted. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Ohio State. Reason being, Iowa just doesn't have enough against teams like Ohio State, Michigan. You clearly saw that last night in the Michigan game. I'm taking Ohio State by 10. King. Iowa by three. Okay. Ooh, okay. Hey, look, I Iowa's got closers. I mean, Frederick free throw shot. I love Frederick. Frederick is their fourth option. Really good defender, and he shoots the lights out. And he's their fourth option. And you know what I think of Wieskamp. I think Wieskamp, of the guys on their team, Wieskamp to me is the NBA player, not Garza. And then finally, sticking in the Big Ten, Michigan State at Maryland. And I don't want to get too crazy on them yet, but look out for the Terps. King, who do you got? Uh, I saw a thing on... Um... On TV, on the Michigan State coach. Good time, is it? Yeah. I, I like him a lot. And you should. So I, I, that I, would I be my reason. I don't know. I, Neither I one of them are like ranked. Tom. I'm surprised. But Michigan State always seems to get better as the year goes on. So Michigan State. Steve? Michigan State's got one really good player. That's Aaron Henry. You notice what they've done stylistically? Michigan State is starting to muck the game up a little bit. A little clutch and grab, physical down low, because I think they figured out that's their best shot at winning. Henry's really good. 
Mm. Maryland's won four in a row, right? But Maryland doesn't have the physicality to play with Michigan State, even though Maryland's playing terrific ball and Ayala's really good. I'll go with Michigan State. Because, but for Michigan State to come up into his next weekend, they're going to lose two to Michigan. I am riding with the Terps. I think if they keep this up, they are getting hot at the right time. I'm riding with the Terps. And that wraps right. it up. Uh-huh. Penn State's there next Sunday night at 7. Terps. I was watching that show I watched with the head coach, and it was about Henry and how yeah. he rode Henry hard, really hard. Yep. And he uh, called up after one game. I mean, he really got in the kid's face when he was a freshman. It was and a, he it called was up a... Henry's father to kind of like, you yeah. know, I know he's your son. You watched it on TV, and I was tough on him. And and the father goes, so? <laughs> and the <laughs> I coach know, yes. was like, what? And he said, that's what I sent him there for. <laughs> He thinks he's great. You you have to. Yeah. You're teaching him how to play basketball, and that's what I want. And you, you coach the way you want to coach. You know. He was but the I opening the character of the coach calling the parent. You know. Yep. To say, hey, you know, I'm just trying to coach your kid, and it was the parent telling the coach, go ahead and do it, man. <laughs> it was the opening so. round of the NCAA tournament. Is where it happened. Right? Yeah. Got got in his face. Next game, he had a career high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Henry's a really good player now. He is yeah, really he's good. good. He's a good kid. You know, the kid responded. It was good. It, so. Yep. And, yeah, you notice he didn't leave. He stayed. Yep. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle is worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC way. The SMC way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years.